Hi, my name is Teresa, and this is a presentation to accompany my SMM poster. As disturbances increasingly disrupt prey sources, detailed long-term diet estimates help us understand cetacean vulnerability and adaptability to changes in prey. And QFASA can provide that kind of detailed long-term diet information by comparing the fatty acid signatures or proportions in predators to a collection or library of fatty acid signatures of potential prey items. Despite this potential, however, QFASA hasn't been widely used in cetaceans. This is in part due to the time and cost of sample processing, but also uncertainty about prey distinctiveness, since we can only identify individual species in predator diet if within species fatty acid variation is less than between species variation. Accordingly, before we could use QFASA to estimate the diet of common bottlenose dolphins, we had to develop an appropriate prey library. I collaborated with the SDRP, which has studied the common bottomless dolphins of Sarasota Bay, Florida since 1970, to collect fish of each species caught in the bay across several months in 2020. I then quantified fatty acid signatures from 72 fatty acids using GCFID. I identified species habitat and diet types and visualized and quantified within and between species fatty acid variation using several methods. Unfortunately, the prey signatures were not as distinct as we would have hoped. My poster includes a cluster diagram that depicts the groups I'm going to discuss, and I invite you to zoom into the diagram on the poster PDF to follow along. 11 of the 28 species that we analyzed, shown in blue, formed single distinct clusters for each species. These also had a low degree of prey confounding, which means that our leave one prey out analysis attributed 70% or more of samples to the correct species and had fatty acid signatures that were largely significantly different from other species. However, groups B and C in green and orange with six and 11 species respectively had multiple clusters per species, intermediate or high degrees of confounding and significant similarities to some or several other species. Now, what might cause this lack of distinctiveness? Like for their predators, fish fatty acids are influenced by their diet. And the least distinct fish species were either fish and invertebrate generalists or invertebrate specialists. Predators that eat a wide variety of prey that are also consumed by other species will be harder to distinguish, as might fish that consume only invertebrates, which are generally near the bottom of the food chain and so might contribute fatty acids all the way up that chain, even to species that don't directly consume the invertebrates. We also caught and analyzed fish across different months, and seasonal variation in fatty acids due to factors like reproductive state has been recorded in other systems, which may increase within species variation and thus decrease species distinctiveness. Ultimately, we'll combine the Sarasota Prey Fatty Acid Library with calibration coefficients calculated from managed common bottomless dolphins, which I've already determined, and use QFASA to explore diet in the Sarasota Bay dolphins, in particular quantifying vulnerability and response to harmful algal blooms that are increasingly impacting the abundance and diversity of prey fish in Sarasota Bay. However, the small sample sizes and indistinct fatty acid signatures of some species means that further sample processing and data analysis are necessary before we can move forward with QFASA. I'm currently increasing the sample sizes for each species using fish caught in a single month to control for seasonal variation. This additional data may increase species distinctiveness and will also allow for improved and additional analyses that may provide better information and statistical support for factors like diet type that drive fatty acid signature similarity. Finally, certain prey species may simply not be distinct enough from each other and will need to be grouped by diet type or other yet to be determined factors. While this would decrease the detail that Kibasa diet estimates could generate, it would still provide useful information about prey species consumption and diet variation. With that, I'd like to acknowledge and thank all of my support sources, and I welcome questions and suggestions over email or in person at the conference. Thank you.